Hello, so welcome to my reading wrap up for the month of January. So I'm not going to go through every book that I read. I've decided to sort of simplify it and I'm only going to talk about the ones that are higher than a 4.25 rating. So just the good stuff. <laughs> so we so we can see a raven outside. So I've read a total of 53 books this month, but out of those 13 were DNFs. So I read 40 books completely and DNF'd another 13 on top of that. Out of the 53 books that I read, four of them were audiobooks. So let me talk about the best of the books that I read this month. We'll start with Hallowed Games, which if I had to pick one, I think that would be my favourite out of the books I read. So this was 4.75. So this was basically a Hunger Games kind of book with witches and vampires. And you had an MMC that was just an absolute fool for a FMC. Now, FMC is just doing what she's got to survive. You know, she's got a one-track mind and she's not deviating from that and just using people to her advantage. It was basically just a fun, sexy time. You know, it's nothing serious. It was just very entertaining and I just poured through it. And then I read House of Beating Wings and I gave this a four and a half stars. Once again, it's just a, it was just a fun fantasy romp. This one had uh, some serpent sea serpent friends and talking crows and it had a lot of promise the second book did not <laughs> live up to the hype the first book though was really interesting it felt like a little bit different too uh, in terms of the world building and the magic system it was a little bit unique and i thought oh where's this gonna go this one had multiple love interests so <laughs> uh keep that in mind <laughs> none of them were really fantastic <laughs> but at the time, I enjoyed it. And once again, I just read it through in one go. And then it was Ruthless Vows with a 4.25. Uh, this was the second in the duology. And I thought it was a pretty decent wrap up. Uh, the romance was probably a little too much on the chaste for me. And this did employ a trope that I'm not a huge fan of. You know, it, it kind of takes until that trope goes away for things to actually be interesting for me. I find it otherwise very frustrating. But overall, it was, it's was it got a historical kind of feel to it. There is a magic involved in gods, but it's not, it's not the predominant focus. The main point of attention is the relationship between Roman and Iris and the connection that they have that was forged through these magical typewriters. So yeah, that was a, that was a lovely light read. As light as can be two for war, there was actually a lot of death and maiming but for some reason i don't know it just didn't feel dark and depressing even though there was very gruesome subject matter the next book that i picked up was half a soul by olivia atwater who's become one of my favorite authors and i gave this one a four and a half star so i've got the postie outside and i'm just saying yeah they're going to stop and i'll have to get that in a second so this is definitely a cozy fantasy read it is very chaste in terms of the romance it's a slow 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 burn but you've got really cool fey and world building going on interesting characters it's a sort of historical regency kind of theme as well so it's got that old school charm to it but it's just a lovely more low stakes kind of read with a bit of whimsy and a bit of magic and then we've got the cat who taught zen and i did give this 4.75 it's mostly just for the vibes this is a feel-good book you've just got a cat going on a quest for enlightenment and figuring out what is the real meaning and purpose of their life you've got lovely illustrations along the way it's just full of zen koans so it's got that parable kind of feel or fable is it fables when it's animals i think it's fables to it and yeah it's just a hug in a book so it's sweet and wholesome and nurturing then i got have adventure time with fiona and cake i gave these four and a half stars i'm a huge fan of the series so i think having knowledge of the series helps a lot with the enjoyment of these books i go in already knowing all of the characters and the history so this was a fun tale with fiona and cake i absolutely loved uh lumpy space prince's chapters I find them hilarious, whether it's he or she, it doesn't matter in all the iterations, they are fabulous. And once again, it's just a very wholesome, enjoyable, fun, entertaining, colourful, magical read. And then my last more highly rated book for this month was So Late in the Day by Claire Keegan. I gave this four and a half stars. This is an itty bitty itty bitty book. 
uh, showing a glimpse into the life of a middle-aged white Irishman who has a partner, isn't engaged to be married, and sort of a look at the domestic life and the mundane life and the work life and just at uh, this dude's absolute lack of interpersonal skills and self-awareness. <laughs> but I enjoyed the writing style. It, even though it's a book that's, I guess you kind of say like a slice of life book, I still found it very readable and just read it in one sitting. Obviously, I think most people do just, just sit there and read it all from start to finish because it's so short. But I will definitely check out more of this author's works. I believe this one was just meant to be a writing exercise for one of her classes and then they did, she decided to uh, publish it. So yeah, I did also enjoy that one. So there were out of the 53 books uh, this month, seven of them I rated 4.25 and higher. So it's not a large portion, but at least it's, you know, more than a handful of really, really enjoyable reads. Most of them were fantasy and fantasy romance, but there was a lit fic in there. But I guess, yeah, overall I tend to enjoy fantasy the most still to this day. But that was a very quick, short summary of my month of January. And until next time, stay well, Star Child.